So since we relate the motion of charge in a uniform electric field to things like projectile motion, right? So we'll still use the same approach that we use to solve projectile motion in this kind of question over here. So I remember that in semester one, when I talk about this, I see that there's five steps that you need to follow in order to solve questions involving projectile motion. So the first step will be to visualize the situation, which you have the picture over here. You just need to label all the values. And then you need to determine where is your initial and final position. This one for every single sub question, they can have different initial and final position. So you have to be very careful and read the question in order to determine the initial and final position. The third thing will be to determine SUVAT. If it involves two dimension, they need X and Y dimension. The fourth one will be to pick the correct SUVAT equation. And the last step will be to substitute the correct value over here. Okay, so we're going to follow the five steps that we do in projectile motion in this kind of question over here. So we already have a picture over here to describe the situation. What we need to do now is just label the values that we know. Okay, so we know that there's a horizontal speed traveling inward and uh, traveling to the right, which is 1.20 times 10 to the power of 7. So since this, uh, we don't call it initial or final, we just label it as 1.20 times 10 to the power of 7 meter per second. And then we also know that they are 4 cm apart, which is already labeled, and they have a potential difference of 300 volt. So you can uh, do something like this maybe. Uh, potential difference is 300 volt. Okay, then you say the length of each plate is 6 cm, which is labeled over here as well. Okay, so now we have a clear visualization of the process. They even tell you how the charge will move already. Okay, so this seems like uh, a very, uh, they give you most of the information that you need already. Okay, so now we move on to the second step, which is to read the sub-question and to determine the initial and final position. So for question A, they ask for the time taken by the electron to traverse the electric field. So it means like, what is the time taken for the electron to go from entering the electric field to the point where it exits the electric field? how much is the time taken over here so this is the journey that we are interested in so point a will be our initial position point b will be our final position so we determine the initial and final position based on the question that is given over here okay the third step will be to determine the suvat which is uh, s u v a n t so for this one since it's a two-dimensional motion there will be x dimension and there will be y dimension. For x dimension, you have sx, ux, vx, ax, and t. Whereas for the y dimension, you have sy, uy, vy, ay, and t. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to fill in everything and to see uh, what information you have, what information that you don't have. From there on you see what kind of equation will be suitable to get the answer. Okay, so Sx is the horizontal displacement from the initial position to the final position. The horizontal displacement from A to B is called Sx. The vertical one is called Sy over here. We know that the horizontal displacement is 6 cm. So that will be 0 0.060 meter. And since the motion is to the right, we keep it as positive 0 0.060 meter. Okay. That's why we don't know, and that is what we'll be what we will find in question E later. So we just leave it blank like this over here. Okay. Ux is the initial horizontal velocity. So initial is at this point over here. Why is the horizontal velocity at this point over here? Well, the horizontal velocity is just 1.20 times 10 to the power of 7 meter per second. So this one, it's being given in the question. You know that you move with this horizontal speed until it enters here. So you enters here with a horizontal speed of 1.20 times 10 to the power of 7. At the same time, you know that because the, the charge is moving horizontally, 
So that means by it is at rest in the y dimension. The, the charge is not moving up or not moving down at, when it's moving into the electric field. Therefore, you know that the y component of initial velocity should be zero. So this is zero meter per second for ui. If the object is in, if the charge is initially moving upwards, then it will be a positive ui. If the charge is moving downwards initially, then it has a negative ui. You have to look at the situation. Okay, vx and vy over here to determine what is vx and vy, we have to first look at the acceleration first actually. So acceleration again is caused by net force. You have to remember that acceleration is caused by net force. So if your charge is over here, the only force that you experience is uh, electric force. And the electric force will be pointing in this case upwards. Okay, because your path is going upwards, right? If your path is going upwards, then that means uh your 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 whole your whole motion here it's influenced by a force that is pointing upwards so there is no force in the horizontal dimension because there is no parallel plate on the left and right okay you know that the force will be parallel to the electric field line it'll be either pointing towards a positive plate or pointing towards a negative plate depending on the sign of the charge itself okay so in this case there is no acceleration in the x component because there is zero force acting in the x component there is no horizontal force in this situation therefore ax will be equals to zero ax is equal to zero meter per second square therefore you know that no acceleration constant velocity in the x component therefore you know that vx should have the same value as ux Okay, so that's how we fill out the x component. Let's progress to the y component. So the y component, we know that there will be an acceleration because there is a net force in the y dimension. And the net force is actually pointing upwards. The only force acting on this charge over here is an electric force and it's pointing upwards. So how do we determine the force? That one we have to fill in the blank later. Then from after we know the force, only we can determine the acceleration. Okay, but for now we know for sure that we don't know the velocity over here. So we can leave this blank, but for UY we have to determine it later. Okay, it might be a bit confused, but you can follow along the process. Then probably you can find a better way of doing it. But for now I leave AY blank. AY will be found later. Okay, question B. Hey, question A, we haven't finished question A, what am I doing? We want to find the time, right? So if you want to find the time, time is what we need. We have information regarding the displacement horizontal. We have the initial velocity. We have acceleration. Well, we can just use S. X is equals to UXT plus half AXT squared. Okay, so this is step four over here. We are determining what equation will be suitable. You want to find time, but we have sx, we have ux, we have ax. Therefore, we use this equation over here. You can use v square. No, v square equals to u square plus 2as. It's not the correct choice. From these three things over here, you can only pick two information because this is actually, uh, how do I call it? They are not three independent information. You can only take two of the value over here. Uh, you learned that from last semester. I'm not going to repeat that. Okay, so put in the value 0 0.060 is equals to u 1.20 times 10 to the power 7. Time, you are finding it. Acceleration, x component is 0. Because of this one is 0. Okay, that's why the whole thing becomes 0 at the back. So from here, you can find the time taken. From you to go from A to B, it's 5 nanosecond. So this is how you solve question A over here. Next, you move on to question B. Question B asks for the force. Okay, now you ask for the force, only you can go for the acceleration. So how do you determine the force? Well, to determine the force, you need to know the magnitude of the electric field. And you need to know the charge that is experiencing the force. The charge that is experiencing the force is the electron. Okay, the force is acting on the electron. So the charge experiencing the force will be the electron. 
and we are only interested with the absolute value only. So this is 1.60 times 10 to the power negative 90. You need to know that proton, the charge is positive 1.60 times 10 to the power negative 19. For electron, it's negative 1.60 times 10 to the power negative 19. But since there is an uh, what you call this modulus over here, that's why you don't need to write the sign. Okay. Next, you move on to the electric field. The electric field is not given over here, but you know this electric field is produced by a pair of parallel plates. So what you can do is you can use this equation here to determine the electric field produced by a pair of parallel plates by taking the high potential minus the low potential. We don't need to minus. They tell us it's 300 already. And the distance between the two plates will be the distance here. Okay, 4 cm, not 6 cm. D is the distance between the two points that we take the potential difference. So we are taking a potential difference between the two plates. So of course the distance will be between the two plates. So this will be 4 cm, 0 0.040. So if you calculate that, I believe you get the uh, electric field to be equals to 7500 volt per meter. And if you put it inside here, 7,500, 7, then you get that the magnitude of force experienced by the electron will be 1.2 times 10 to the power negative 15 Newton. Okay, so if you wish to write down the direction, actually you can write down the direction, you just need to express it in vector form. So write down the magnitude, and you write the direction, you know the direction is pointing upward. Okay, next, C, they ask for the acceleration. If they ask for the acceleration, well, you're in luck because uh, sum of Fy is equals to, you probably don't need to do this actually. Um, can I, you can do this actually. <laughs> uh, you can do sum of Fy is equals to May. Then sum of Fy, there's only one force in the y dimension, which is the electric force. So this will be, uh, you can call it F. Uh, let's call this let's call this f should be enough because we use this symbol f over here so f is equals to m a y okay you can write a positive here to indicate it's pointing upwards okay so you know the force is 1.2 times 10 to the power negative 15 then the mass is the mass of an electron okay the force is acting on an electron so f equals to m a of course the mass will be the mass of electron the mass of electron is given in the constant sheet to be 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31. Then you get Ay as your answer. So your acceleration in the y component, you get an answer of 1.32 times 10 to the power of 15 meter per second square. And if you write in terms of vector, then it'd be 1.32 times 10 to the power of negative a power of 15 meter per second and you know that the direction of acceleration must be the same as the direction of net force so the direction of net force in the y dimension is pointing upwards therefore the acceleration is also pointing upwards acceleration follows the direction of net force pointing up okay next move on to d D asks for the vertical velocity of the oops. Uh, D asks for the vertical velocity of the electron at B. So they're asking for vertical velocity that is Vy. If they're asking for Vy, well, we have the information for Ay already. Let's fill that in. 1.32 times 10 to the power of 15 meter per second square. If they ask for Vy, then what we need to do is to find which equation is suitable. Again, they are asking for the vertical velocity at B. So B will be the in position where we're interested in. So we can still take A and B as our initial and final position. And because we take A and B as the initial and final position, then we can use back the suvet that we created at A. But if the initial and final position for question D is different from question A, they have to create a new SUVAT based on the new initial and final position. 
Again, always remember, as you VAT, you have to create based on the initial and final position. But now, since the question D has the same initial and final position for compared to question A, therefore, we can reuse the SUVAT from question A, or else you have to recreate it. Okay, so that's why I can just fill in straight away the acceleration over here. So now we want to find Vy, which is the vertical final velocity. We have, we need to find this, and we have information regarding this, this, and also time. Okay, time we have the value ready. Let's put that in. Time the value is five times ten to the power negative nine second. Okay, so since we have we need to have an equation that has v, u, a, and t inside, then the equation that is suitable will be v y is equals to u y plus a y t. Okay. So Vy, Uy is how much? Uy is 0 plus Ay is how much? 1.32 times 10 to the power of 15 times it's 5 times 10 to the power of negative 9. So if you substitute everything, I believe you should get the answer to be 6.59 times 10 to the power of 6 meter per second. So this is the value for the vertical velocity. Uh, when it comes out at point B. Okay, so proceed to question E. Question E asks for the vertical displacement of the electron. Vertical displacement, vertical means Y, displacement means S. So S subscript Y, the displacement in the Y component. So they find the vertical displacement of the electron when it emerged from the electric field at B. Okay, so when the charge comes out at B, what is the amount of displacement over here, Sy? Okay, so now they are interested in Sy. You want to find Sy and you have value of Uy, you have value of Ay, and you have value of T. Okay, so you can use formula which is of space. Okay. Can, there, there's a few formula that can use, but I'll be using S is equals to UT plus half A T squared. Okay, why is this formula convenient? Because UY will be zero, so this one will be equal to zero. So I just need to substitute half AY and T. Of course, T needs to be squared. So if you calculate it, I believe you should get the answer of 0 0.0165. Okay, so that will be the distance over here. It will be 1.65 cm. Okay, 1.65 cm, it's definitely smaller than 4 cm. Okay, so if you get 1.65 over here, and you know that the charge is entering from the middle, means by up here, will be 2cm, down here will be 2cm, okay? If you calculate the value over here to be 1.65cm, that means that the charge over here will not touch the plate when it exits the uh, electric field over here. But if you happen to get a value, let's say 2.5cm, Okay, if you get a value of 2.5 cm, means by if the charge has moved a distance of 6 cm horizontally, vertically, you have moved by a distance of 2.5 cm. If that's the answer that you get, then that means 2.5 is larger than 2 cm. That means the charge would have already hit the positive plate before it even get to exit the electric field. It will hit the plate before getting out from the electric field. So occasionally you see, que see questions like determine whether the charge will hit one of the plate before exiting the electric field. So what you need to do is you check the vertical displacement over here, whether it's larger than the amount of space that you have before. Okay, if it's moving downwards, it's the same idea. If the space you have is 2cm, but your vertical displacement is more than 2cm, that means you hit the plate. But if less than 2 cm, then you haven't hit the plate, you manage to exit the electric field successfully.
okay, it's a bit complicated, but through some exercises and through some exploration, I believe you should be able to solve this. Just remember that the steps to solve this is similar to projectile motion. Just that for AY, it's no longer negative 9.81 meter per second squared. For AY, you have to determine from the force, which you have to determine from the electric field. The electric field, sometimes you have to determine from the potential difference divided by the distance between the two plates. Okay, if you know the relationship clearly, you should be able to solve this question with ease. Okay, so that's all for this question over here.